Probably the most quoted humorist on the Americanist scene today, and I presume by the nature of his enemies, on occasion one of, some, one of the most misquoted, is Mr. Thomas J. Anderson. His humor, his humor does not consist of the superficial gags of the self-styled comedian, but it bears the sharp point of a barbed arrow into the heart of today's issues. In 1947, Tom Anderson realized a dream when he purchased the Arkansas Farmer. And then it extended his chain of farm publications to Mississippi, Georgia, and uh, Alabama. In 1953, he became editor-in-chief, publisher, and half-owner of Farm and Ranch magazine, a regional farm publication with circulation from Maryland to California. His straight talk columns have appeared in more than 400 newspapers and magazines and have been aired on radio stations throughout the nation. He has been the recipient of the Liberty Award of the Congress of Freedom twice and the Freedom Award of the Freedoms Foundation at Valley Forge. In 1972, he accepted the nomination of the American Party as their vice presidential candidate and traveled from coast to coast in an untiring effort to bring the Americanist message to the American people. In December of 1972, he was elected national chairman of the American Party. His dogged and untiring energies to bring a choice to the American people have only just begun. As an active church layman, past president of the American Agricultural Editors Association, and a member of the National Council of the John Birch Society, Tom Anderson has established himself as the patriarch of what he calls the constitutional underground. Speaking on the morals of the United Nations, it is our privilege and our pleasure to hear from Thomas J. Anderson. Thank you very much. Some speakers would hate to follow a smooth professional like Ed Griffin. Actually, I'd rather follow a great speaker than a poor speaker. The other night, I followed a real poor speaker, and all during my speech, they kept on booing him. Uh, this, this could be the shortest speech I ever made. I'm supposed to talk about the morals of the United Nations. The United Nations doesn't have any morals, period. So, let's talk about the immorality of the United Nations. And to try to do that in 10 minutes makes me feel like an Egyptian mummy pressed for time. We who oppose the United Nations are called isolationists, kooks, haters, and againers. Like the barfly who fell asleep in his chair and another drunk slipped up behind him and rubbed a big hunk of Limburger cheese in his mustache. And the Limburger lad got up and staggered up the bartender and said, ain't it awful? And the bartender said, ain't what awful? He said, the whole world stinks. <laughs> To me, to me, everything in the United Nations stinks. <laughs> the United Nations is immoral in concept and in action. It is an ill-conceived mixture of oil and water, friend and enemy, Christian and cannibal. Putting our faith and fortune, life and liberty, into the hands of the United Nations is like a cow entering a cage of hungry lions to vote on what they'll have for dinner tonight. <laughs> World Brotherhood through the United Nations is an incredible dream requiring the impossible unification of Christ and Antichrist, 
morality and immorality, freedom and slavery. Free nations cannot unite with police state nations. Free armies cannot integrate with unfree. Free people can't unite with slaves. Parliamentary palaver cannot produce peace. World peace cannot be bought by surrendering sovereignty to any kind of a world government, even a moral one. We must have a foreign policy based on American strength instead of United Nations weakness, based on right instead of wrong, on God instead of the devil. The United Nations is communism, and communism has no morals. The communist philosophy, and hence the United Nations philosophy, is to lie, steal, cheat, murder, and destroy whatever individuals or whatever civilizations stand in communism's way of taking the world. The United Nations Charter was conceived in sin by criminals, American traitors, and Marxists. Molotov and Al Jahis secretly set it up so that the military chief in the United Nations would always be a Russian appointed by the Kremlin. Since the United Nations was founded, the communist criminals have increased their slavery from 250 million to 1 billion people. Since the United Nations was founded, there have been more wars than for any similar period in history, most of them incited by the communists. The United Nations is a talkathon by a mouth with no teeth and two tongues, one in each cheek. The United Nations favors disarmament, they say, certainly, so the communist United Nations will control the world. They say the United Nations favors peace, certainly, the peace of the graveyard, the peace of the firing squad, after the bodies have been dumped into the mass grave, the peace of surrender. People prattle about the United Nations failures, as they call them. They were not failures. They were planned that way. The United Nations failure to win in Vietnam, failure to prevent communist infiltration of Central and South America, failure to win in Korea, failure to prevent the rape of Cuba, Tibet, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Katanga, and the Congo, failure to restore freedom to the people of Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, or Poland, East Germany, Bulgaria, Romania, Yugoslavia, Russia, and China. These were not failures. These were United Nations successes. United Nations is the enemy. As General MacArthur stated, the communist head of the United Nations military staff reviewed all orders going from the Pentagon to General MacArthur and gave them to the enemy before MacArthur received them. This was treason, and treason is, to say the least, immoral. The one-worlders have conned thousands of school teachers into brainwashing min millions of children with the big lie that the United Nations is the hope of the world. If it were, there would be no hope. Have you ever heard of a Marxist, a communist, a liberal, a Black Panther, a CFR member, a Rockefeller, a Fonda, a Hiss, or a Kissinger being against the United Nations? It's got to be immoral. We cannot oppose evil by compromising with evil. We cannot go forth into all the world and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ if we deny Jesus Christ in the United Nations, in our schools, and in our daily lives. We become part of what we condone. The United Nations plays chess while we play poker. The enemy's moves are coldly calculated all the way. We lose pot after pot because our cards are marked, the deck is stacked, and the dealer is crooked. But we stay in the game because it's the only game in town. <laughs> the devil has certainly been in hog heaven in recent years in our country and all over the world. I heard the other day about a preacher in Pigeon Forge where our headquarters is. In case some of you don't know where Pigeon Forge is, it's halfway between Frog Alley and Boogertown. <laughs> and 
he announced one recent Sunday that there are 746 sins. And ever since then, he's been plagued by telephone calls asking for copies of the list. <laughs> they tell us the United Nations must be enlarged, so must hell. Isaiah 514. The United Nations and its handmaiden communism are two sides of the same coin, the greatest fraud in all history. One world brotherhood is a project of the devil, not of God, for God gave, has prescribed nationalism in Deuteronomy 32.8 and also Amos 3.3. 3. In fact, God divided the peoples into nations to keep them from being destroyed, Genesis 9 and 10. Internationalism is Satan's program, not God's, Isaiah 14, 12. In Genesis 11, 1 and 9, we read how internationalism brought on wickedness and rejection of God. And for thousands of years, it has been used by Satan to do so again and again. God decried internationalism, scattering the human race and creating the different languages to hinder their communications. So when we defend the sovereignty of our nation, we are doing God's will. But unless more people get involved, Christian and non-Christian, the next generation of Americans will experience what Walt Rostow has called an end to nationhood, which means an end to American liberty. The Bible tells us that the devil would de deceive the whole world and that the devil is a murderer, a liar, the father of lies and lies. Again and again, the Bible warns us not to be deceived, especially during the last days, by Satan, the prince of the one world system. Ever since Satan's fall, his plan and insatiable ambition has been to establish one world government under himself, a world of enslaved robots under the Antichrist. The founder of the Illuminati, Adam Weishaupt, was known by his contemporaries as the human devil. The United Nations is opposed to religious freedom, opposed to freedom of speech, prayer, ownership of personal property, the right to criticize government, nationalism, local police, sanctity and security of the home, the profit motive, and the right to withdraw from the United Nations. All of those rights are God-given, and any organization or any person opposing them is evil. It is unscriptural for a Christian to support and defend this godless, Christ-hating organization. For the Bible says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The United Nations' goal is one world, world army, world navy, world schools, world taxes, world courts, world firing squads, and a world church, minus Christ. The United Nations and its bedmates, the CFR, Atlantic Unionists, World Federalists, the Plague of Women Voters, the National and World Council of Churches, our Marxist infiltrated State Department, educational establishment, and their liberal cohorts are universally, consciously and unconsciously, and unceasingly working to implement the devil's long-standing goals to kill God and Christianity, marriage, family, home, patriotism, private ownership of property, morality, and to promote sexual promiscuity, homosexuality, and permissiveness. Some say the United Nations is better than nothing. Give it a chance. Don't be a calamity howler. Be optimistic, like the fellow who was visiting his friend who was to die in the electric chair the next morning. He says, cheer up. Just think you still have your health. <laughs> and Americans, most Americans, refuse to believe the truth about the United Nations. Like the drunk on the Titanic who said, I ordered ice, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> George Washington once said during battle, put none but Americans on guard tonight. In the heat of the battle, our present commander in chief says, now let me just say this. Many of our present day leaders are not really Americans. They are one worlders. But the only real one world that would ever happen is the second coming of Jesus Christ.
Once a football team was playing its last game of the season against its arch rival. Right before game time, a lowly sub who had never gotten into a game, and this was the last one, begged the coach to let him start the final game. He's the most popular player on the squad, mused the coach. I'll just put him in for a play or two for morale purposes. On the opening kickoff, the sub raced down the field and made the tackle unassisted. He continued to play like an All-American. The coach couldn't take him out. With 30 seconds to go and the score tied, the sub made a sensational tackle behind the goal line and won the game. He was carried off the field by his teammates. In the locker room, the coach said, son, what in the world came over you? You never played like that. The sub said, well, coach, it's like this. Three days ago, my father died. He had been blind all his life. Today, for the first time in heaven, he was watching. I believe our founding fathers are watching us today. The whole world is watching us. We are what stands between the world and slavery. If the lamp of freedom is blown out in America, the world will be thrown into darkness. If we have what it takes, morality and courage, we will destroy that diabolical conspiracy of hate that is communism and the evil conspiracy behind it. We will win because as Christian soldiers we are prepared to fight, work, and pray for what is right together. <laughs>